Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. Uh, this satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters. You can ask your questions and get your doubts cleared. So, all the questions are most welcome. Graham is asking, contradictory answers are given to the same questions in different satsangs. What causes you to choose one answer versus another? Is it based on the need of the seeker? Yes, it is based on the need of the seeker. And uh, whatever can make that seeker progress is told. Secondly, if I don't know where that seeker is, then something general is given. Some general answer is given, which can be twisted in any direction. So usually I try to find out what that person wants by asking questions. Instead of giving answers, the best thing is to do is to ask questions. What do they want? Why are they in the program or in the satsang and so on. And then after suggesting a proper path, proper action, then a suitable answer is given to whatever he was asking. So the intention is always progress of the seeker. Even if the answer is a complete lie, it is only for the good of the seeker. There is a question by Vikas. Between these two statements, which one would be more accurate? I feel it's the second one. Currently, there are 30 people on this call sharing a common waking state. Currently, there are 30 waking states appearing in shared awareness. It is all play of words. So, the words are not that important. Your knowledge is important. You can express it in any word, any kinds of words. So, both are correct. Yes, we can see people who are in waking state and uh, we can see that the people are actually illusions, part of the dream. So, it is simply experience that is appearing. So, there can be multiple viewpoints. It's not a big problem. And the ultimate viewpoint is that there is nothing really. There is only emptiness which is apparent. So, like he was asking why the answers change. And we know that anything that changes is false. So, answers are changing. They are all false. Actually, no answer is true and no interpretation is true. If you use words to express your knowledge, it will be always false. So, the true teaching is silence. But since nobody understands it, we need to speak. So, that is why I say, Guru always lies, never answers. Or the answer is such that the, there remains only silence. There remains nothing to think or there is no feeling that I got the answer. Nobody gets the answer here. The question is destroyed. This is the path of knowledge where we start with lies and we end in silence, unknowing or agnostic position. You will never know anything. Whatever you know will be removed. Whether it is true or false, doesn't matter. Because ultimately it's all false. Everybody knows that the questions appear out of ignorance. And if the answer is given, that is also ignorance. But since the seeker cannot comprehend the silence, some answer is given. That answer is always such that it uh, makes the seeker progress towards the silence. That is why on other paths, which are because the path of knowledge is very logical. So the seeker is expecting a very, very logical, precise answer. And exactly that is given. But in on other paths, the seekers are not even allowed to ask questions because it is already realized that these questions and answers they simply delay their silence. So if the questions keep coming even after giving the knowledge, I can immediately see that the state of silence or awareness or bliss, whatever you want to call it, is not there. And, and then some drastic answers are given sometimes, which is simply a signal to the seeker that Stop thinking. Stop asking. Be what you are. If you are still asking, that means what? You don't know what you are. Especially if the questions are related to basic knowledge. There can be practical questions. It's a different matter. So, even after finishing the program, even after doing a lot of practice, if there remains these questions where and the essence is confused, then I become worried. That means... So much hard work is wasted. So on the path of knowledge, we are um, putting more emphasis on bliss and silence. 
less on questions and answers so just like the questions are total useless word soup answers are also same so there is a period during which the seeker will be kind of unstable but it should not last for more than 3 um, or 4 months that is why we have one month uh, verification period here where the seeker is allowed to oscillate between the path and leaving the path you know joining the path or leaving the path because the hearing has happened the truth has been heard now find out you were given one month one month is very long time actually it should take one hour to find out whether what was said was true or not actually as soon as you listen to something on the path of knowledge it should be crystal clear that yes this is true or this is not true there should not be any doubts why are there doubts because there are gaps in knowledge one thing was heard the other thing was not heard or the first thing was forgotten the second thing is more juicy so these things keep happening so i have given one month time you can remain uncertain for that time and then you need to choose the path or you need to reject the path that is why the instruction is so clear straightforward that if you cannot verify anything here just leave the whole path of knowledge so i know some people are still uncertain and they say okay i verified everything some people tell me that when i listen to you everything is crystal clear but then i am lost in my own thoughts then everything becomes muddy and that is simply the lack of awareness it is not that the teachings were unverified it is simply that the person forgets completely vikas is saying uh, that i think it's the unbelievability of this non dual reality that is that what causes is what causes me to keep on confirming this absolute truth even though technically i have no questions i don't feel like not asking questions some level there is utter reverence speechlessness you know so it is not logical to say that unbelievable absolute truth because if it is absolute truth for you then the disbelief will not be there it simply means that you heard it but you don't know whether it is true or not that is why there is a disbelief but probably you mean the positive kind of disbelief i can't believe that this is the truth and that also should not cause any questions yes it can cause poems songs music writing that is the output yes if not silence then something will be there otherwise if the truth has been realized then there is absolutely no doubt otherwise we don't call it realization we simply call it listening you heard something that's all so how to verify how to remove the disbelief or um, even the surprise it's not surprising the surprise is that i considered the truth to be to be something else that is the surprise so how to remove this verification spend at least one month verifying the teachings at all the levels each and everything there the guru can help us yes. the job of the guru is to remove the doubts because teachings are available everywhere you see anybody can go and read the teachings <laughs> it's two lines or three lines only but yes the guru is needed to remove the doubts otherwise nothing is understood it is not realized and then it will become ordinary it is like uh, you are a man and for 5 minutes you assume that you are a woman for whole of your life you are a man no problem at all and for the rest of your life after this 5 minute you will be a man you won't be a woman so for that 5 minutes only it was assumed that i am a woman so which condition is strange that i was a man and will remain a man and even while i was assuming that i was a woman i was mistaken i was a man even then so the real surprise is that there is ignorance this is the real surprise that the person has assumed himself to be a woman as soon as that is removed everything should return to normal oh yes i was always the experiencer that is ordinary the extraordinary is that believing something else so i have never seen any advanced seekers who are even surprised by this the surprise is for other things like how could i forget this is the surprise why was there darkness if it is so simple why nobody told me <laughs> these are the questions and some people laugh when they know who they are and they are not laughing because you know finally they understood something they are laughing at their own stupidity 
that how is it possible that uh, for so many lifetimes <laughs> i fool myself into thinking that i am some kind of experience they are laughing at themselves so the knowledge is not new yes the ignorance is new the knowledge is simple straightforward no bells and whistles the ignorance is colorful complicated and needs a lot of tricks to keep the organism in ignorance the maya does everything possible to keep it in ignorance and the guru takes only 1 minute to <laughs> break it look at the illusion the maya what it is not doing to keep us in illusion to keep us in ignorance what is guru doing to bring you out of the ignorance simply tells you <laughs> now the most interesting thing is even after telling the person the person wants to remain in ignorance this i find very surprising because it did not happen to me as soon as i was told look contemplate on this thing who you are i had no thoughts about it that probably i need to go back in ignorance now probably i need to take this guru to the police station and do a interrogation <laughs> of some kind or to ask for more evidence and all it was crystal clear and it was crystal clear this is the end of ignorance and i did not even laugh because the stupidity was too high to even laugh at it but there was a relaxation thing. okay finally it's over now whatever i was searching i was seeking finally it's done so there was a little bit of relaxing laziness that's all no questions Well, I think sometimes when I come to such thing, I feel total opposite. Why am I not asking questions? Am I not progressing? No, no, no. We have discussed this uh, topic in many times that uh, the questions are not asked in only two cases. Either there is complete ignorance or there is complete knowledge. When the person is in between, then the questions are asked. So we encourage questioning from those who are in complete ignorance. we ask them to get the evidence question everything do not believe it blindly and so on and those who are in knowledge we ask them to be in silence now ingraham is saying how can we spend time with you if you don't ask silly questions i don't really need to ask most of the time but i don't want such thing to end like to hear your thoughts it is best to let others ask the questions isn't it so but i don't see any problem in asking questions vikas is saying intellectually i haven't had any questions for 3 years but the more the understanding permeates on the level of body and mind the questions are just to confirm again and again on what feels like that are impossibility earth so it's not a big problem the big problem is if it um, if the introspection is not done if there is questioning only and there is no introspection or whatever we call as contemplation so i have seen because i can talk from my own experience that the introspection also takes only one day this path is called direct for very good reason that <laughs> it does not take time nothing takes time here so i am not saying nobody should ask questions yes but the needful must be done before that that which is necessary must be done pratib is saying a hot pan example yes it does not the hot pan is a direct path isn't it and that is a very good metaphor for direct path how many times do you need to touch it illala is saying questions concerning maya and the illusion is most interesting to hear in satsang obviously uh, the truth is really two words nothing interesting there but the illusion is the most interesting thing is what else is there there is only illusion so it is the most interesting and the interesting thing is you will not get any good answers on the illusion also on the topic of illusion it is again false answers not only that you see there is no hope of getting any true answer and not only that there is no end there is no silence here so now this answers the puzzle that you know the advait masters rishis even when they were so intelligent bright extraordinary people they had so much knowledge but they left the illusion as it is saying that it is illusion don't worry about it and they could have written the whole library on illusion they had so much to say but they said nothing and the reason is very clear that endless and meaningless also just like she said only entertainment the purpose of the illusion is entertainment play and its study is also entertainment and its discussion is also entertainment the only danger here is that because it is so interesting you will ignore the truth 
and that is why it is discouraged on the path of knowledge if i am not happy with the progress of the, that seeker then even the questions related to illusion are not answered you must have observed this thing one fellow asked me very very strange questions on illusion and i give give him extremely detailed explanation mind blowing explanation and somebody comes and asks me something simple also and i don't tell him anything my simple advice is you know concentrate on your program why because ignoring the truth there is a danger of getting trapped in the illusion because studying the illusion does not give you knowledge this the old people the ancient people they understood very clearly it simply distracts you from the truth and if the seeker has not already taken the truth all not already realized the truth then it is very dangerous to talk about illusion then the danger is that the seeker will assume that this is the knowledge it is endless it is mesmerizing it is complicated actually that is what has happened because in your schools only illusion is taught have you noticed endless amount of it so all of them think that this is knowledge <laughs> this is this is a big problem who needs to know the illusion who wants to do something with it with it either desire fulfillment or knowledge dissemination using it for good purpose something otherwise those who want to know the illusion they will be completely distracted we say they are not on the path now so if it is not helping in some way there is no need to know anything there will nothing will be known actually so the explanation of the illusion is also illusion usually i give the example of movies and so on you see you can watch a movie and you can explain everything in lot of detail what happened there how it happened how does the physics of star trek works how they launched weapons and what was the political issue there and you know what was the truth in that movie who was good who was not endlessly you can discuss these things but you see the whole movie is an illusion so this endless discussion was completely meaningless and those who have no idea that this was a movie they will be harmed by this it will be harmful for them so that is why my answers keep changing depending on who is asking now the problem is if you don't answer it you know people lose interest at least you need to keep keep it little bit interesting so that they keep doing the program or keep destroying their ignorance if there is any in the in ideal case you hear it and you are done with it then you do whatever you want play in the illusion no problem at all even if you forget no problem knowledge goes nowhere only the attention is shifted which is which is what you call forgetting now i need to be very careful who is getting the knowledge of the illusion there is nothing bad in that as long as you understand that it is entertainment no problem at all when then is asking please tell us your view about the effect of latitude and longitude on body mind in context of doing any kind type of sadhana actually on path of knowledge there should not be any effect of anything at all because it is based on intellect what is the effect of the place on the body mind is on the lower layers not on intellect if the place or the coordinates are affecting your intellect something is really wrong isn't it these the places they affect the energies or whatever we call as the pranamaya kosh the pran is affected by the place so that must be everybody's experience <laughs> some places feel very bad some places feel very good and i don't know about the details of it actually what places on earth are good for your training but uh, any place is good in any silent place and clean place is good enough for path of knowledge because the higher layers are not affected by the lower energies but the lower are affected yes and not only the coordinate even if there is a little bit of heat pollution noise you know these things they affect your practice so there are special places where if you do some kind of practice prescribed in the path of energy not on path of knowledge some other paths that will that can be beneficial and they have found that the, wherever there are faults in earth by fault i mean cracks below the earth big cracks those places are good for your energetic progress and usually wherever there are faults there are mountains because the ground folds there now you understand the importance of himalayan yogis himalayan uh, 
the monasteries, whatever temples, and even the full mountain was sometimes said to be, you know, sacred mountain, <laughs> like the Kailash mountain and so on. The Tibetan area is whole of it is, will be treated as sacred. Because those who did these kind of practices, they noticed little bit of change, little bit of benefit. But on the path of knowledge, <laughs> no, nothing affects the seeker, nothing at all. And similarly, there are bad places where, where you should not sit while practicing. And they will even tell you lots of detail like what direction to face while doing this kind of practice. What time is good? The Ida and Pingla activity. So it is best to you know join a good um, tradition here. Because even the gurus don't know everything. There is so much. So the whole tradition keeps the knowledge. You should join the tradition and then follow the specific orders. The specific instructions. If they tell you to sit on the top of a mountain or something like this, or in a cave below the ground, underground, your underground chambers in your house and so on, then you should not doubt anything, you see. <laughs> they are doing this since many thousand years. They know what they are doing, hopefully. And anyway, there is no harm if you do that. It's not harmful. Only thing is that you will not benefit from it. If it is false, you won't benefit from it. So very simple. The lower layers are integrated into environment and that is why the seeker must take some precautions while doing these practices. And we don't deal with the lower layers, not much. They should be healthy, active and okay. That's all we need. Now if you face east, you will get the same knowledge. I am Brahman. You face west, same. You face down, exactly same. You are the exact same Brahman. <laughs> this may not be possible when you are doing something with Kundalini or something like this. Now, is it totally necessary that I should sit in a prescribed place, consecrated place or something like this? No, no, no. You will still be successful. But what happens is, the seekers on this path, they exploit even the tiniest thing if they can. Like those who are poor, they will try to save even one rupee if they can. They will walk to home instead of taking a taxi because, you know, save 100 rupees today. So, the seekers are like this actually, when it comes to energetic practices. They will not hesitate in taking even the tiniest of precaution if it helps in their practice. They will do it. And this kind of, uh, you see, questioning attitude is not found there. They are very religious people. It must be done. Yes, it must be done then. I don't know why I am doing No problem, it must be done. They do it. Because at least they know one thing that immediately you may not see any effects the energy body or whatever body they have, that needs to be prepared so much, that needs to be sensi sensitized so much, that one day you will notice the changes directly. So wherever these natural energy points were not found, they made artificial centers. They are called temples. The temple is not some somewhere you go and sing a song and demand your <laughs> desires to be fulfilled. No, it is completely corrupted these days. They are specific places for seekers only. One temple will be only for women. One temple will be only for men. Why is that? The bodies are different, you see. Because it's saying Sadhguru talks about opening of 112 chakras in the body being equivalent to the state of Shiva. Would you be able to throw some light on it? And how it correlates with Pyoke? It has no relation with Pyoke. Obviously, you are the Shiva. You are, you are it already. Now the numbers don't matter here. The chakras means layers. And yes, they need to be functioning. Opening means functioning. Closing means dysfunction. They will never stop functioning actually. So, closed means nothing is really happening. Nothing good is happening there. So, activity, inactivity, charging, discharging, like this. They use any words. The words are meaningless. The numbers are meaningless. And the and the state of Shiva and the state of this, completely meaningless. You are already it. So the words are simply instruments to convey something. And what they are saying is that all these layers must be pure, purified. And only then this knowledge appears. Your body should be fit. Your energy should be pleasant. Your emotion should be positive. Your intellect should be sharp. Now all the chakras are open in their language. 
no blockages now the guru simply needs to tell you are shiva <laughs> and it is done the whole fight is to clear all these blockages and purify these things that is the whole fight so on the path of knowledge we assume that everything is functioning well because this is the final if you come here to get the knowledge it is simply assume that you have the purified layers and that is why there is no practice here it is assumed that you have done all the all the required practices that were told by the gurus before this path before you took this path and those who are prepared like this they take 5 minutes to realize what happened and because the purification is so much nothing odd happens this is the advantage won't go crazy won't start crying won't leave the family or job <laughs> nothing unusual oh this was so simple yes this is so simple back to daily routine why is there so much ornamentation bells and whistles smokes and mirrors impurities are too many isn't it too much impurity impurity there for any average seeker to grasp what is it so the intellect is not functioning guru knows this in, in every satsang there is a story why because the intellect knows only you know can be focused only on a story nothing else will appeal that thing that person nothing else produces any kind of progress there story and in the story is woven some kind of teaching and the teaching is mostly about purification of this or purification of that conduct your life like this conduct your life that and yes there will be monkey king and there will be demons and there will be warriors who knows what because the intellect knows only this much and hopefully they follow it or did he do that the hero did this to get to this yes you should also do this okay i'll do that and the result is purification why there are no stories on path of knowledge now you understand why only two or three lines are written in any text like if you read the avdhut gita if you take only the essential from it it is hardly four or five lines and the same thing is re- repeated in the whole song so yes purification is a big problem otherwise you are what you are it's so simple and straight no glorification is needed at all the more impurity there is the more glorification there will be more stories there will be more superstition and surprisingly more extraordinary experiences will be there because the impurities are reacting with uh, the purification process and they produce some kind of experiences and people think i'm progressing i'm spiritual now because i saw something strange and that is stupidity because is there impurity only so when people are on the fourth step of the program and they start reporting extraordinary experiences very strange cases very very strange uh, events i immediately become worried because sure sign of presence of impurities but i don't tell them because you see they can get affected by it so what do we say oh yes you are progressing now do this you know some kind of purification is prescribed did that thing stop strangeness stop and if this is yes okay now you can continue abiding not stopped leave the path because this is not going to produce anything madness only so sometimes i don't get any reports and all then i come to know probably everything is okay <laughs> probably there is nothing interesting to report how many times can you write you know i am in bliss and i am doing well and i am doing whatever is needed for the life you cannot write it for 12 weeks so it's perfectly okay if you give me one report that the three months were like boring useless months of no practice perfectly okay that means perfectly okay this is how it is this is the reality the brahman is the most ordinary everyday experience nothing more needs to happen whole and complete already i said experience because you know there is no other good word here to put but i get colorful reports every two day then um, even i don't know what to do really so most of the time they are asked to stop the practice that is the last thing we do because the impurities are so much even if there is knowledge the lower stuff is still not pure enough and doing the practices in this state will cause damage but outwardly we don't make a big deal of it we, because i know one more thing that if the persist 
there is some problem but if they come and go these strange experiences if they appear and then disappear then it's normal because the knowledge itself causes some kind of purification it is expected that there will be a little bit of activity of strangeness there will be a little bit of extraordinary experiences and when you get the awareness in dreams and uh, the projected states and all yes they are obviously strange experiences but this should uh, become normal after a while nothing strange about it you see the strange is that you don't know anything except the waking state this is really strange how is that possible what kind of crime you committed that this knowledge was taken from you otherwise the extraordinary is disguised as the ordinary the extraordinary is happening in the ordinary there is an existence there is an experiencer and there is very very strange colorful illusory experience this thing is mind blowing this thing is extraordinary that is disguised as your ordinary life and then you go searching for the colorful experiences to find out something at all which is so called spiritual and those who find we know there are impurities they are deluded in thinking that i am progressing and the guru is not really bothered by this whether they are progressing or not his concern is impurities sometimes you don't even care too much about it because because sometimes it is known that this fellow will take at least four lifetimes to clear it so just like i said the spiritual progress <laughs> or the time is measured in lifetimes in the spiritual fields just like in astronomy it is light years so what is the meaning of light and years nobody will be able to even imagine that this is the unit of distance but they know what it is and same way we measure the progress in lifetimes so we don't even worry that you say it needs to be done today one week one month so the guru says let it happen in whatever time it happens you see let it take whatever time it takes because the nature knows what to do we don't know really the nature is doing the purification also vikas is saying so what i understand is that the chakras knowledge is given to students who are presumed to have little to no knowledge in spirituality it totally depends on what path they are we should discriminate the students based on their paths so if they are on that path where it requires that knowledge they will be given if you are not on that path then this is as good as non existent it does not exist it's not even needed so that is why there is nothing about chakras and all in on the path of knowledge so totally depends on the path what is told depends on what needs to be what is helpful in their progress what is needed if you get the whole knowledge do, do you really need any information about these imaginary things because we know they are models only which means imaginary so the whole purpose is to go to the knowledge to get the knowledge and if you get it initially through the direct path then every other path is redundant is not necessary now not need the purpose is already solved you already reached the destination knowing yourself is the final destination then you don't need anything after that pushkar is asking when we talk about being in awareness i have noticed how not too much description is provided on the state is it because one has to find it on their own it would be nice to have some physiological experiential description to understand if i am in the right state so can you tell me what is being in awareness what is the meaning of awareness i am asking because everybody has different meanings of the same word so i am asking pushkar okay he is saying we are already awareness it is unchanging okay so the definition is different that is why you will you will never find it because in these talks at least in this system awareness means the knowledge of the self and the unchanging aspect of the existence is called the experiencer or the witness not awareness so that is why you did not find anything about it now why did that happen because you see the knowledge must be taken systematically step by step we cannot jump in the end that means nothing will be learned so this is the end of the path of knowledge staying in awareness so you are saying we are already awareness then is there a question of being in awareness how to be in awareness 
if you already know that i am awareness and changing awareness what do you need to do to be the awareness if the ornament knows that it is gold what do what does it need to do to be the gold if you are awareness and you are unchanging will there be any physiological description of it because physiological means the body creation is given the definition yes that is the right definition but it's okay you know people come from other um, systems or traditions and they have different meaning so that is why you see i made it my habit to ask the definition and meaning before answering everybody has their own words it is everlasting recognition of the knowledge that i am the experiencer what is what is the everlasting recognition is it a state is it a practice or are you saying awareness is the everlasting recognition what is the meaning of it it because you already said that we are awareness that means our essence is awareness the unchanging essence so what is this new thing now recognition of knowledge knowledge and recognition of knowledge how are they different i am the experiencer this is knowledge now what do you mean by recognition of knowledge i can understand up to this that i am the experiencer that is the self knowledge or self realization atmagyan what is the recognition abiding means being in the knowledge not forgetting the knowledge that's all it means is there any other description of it related to the body physiology psychology no we don't need any i am the experiencer this remembering do we need any more description of it abiding okay the abiding is simply you see not forgetting the whole life is spent in assuming that i am the body i am the mind i am uh, some other process some other experience and abiding is simply not thinking like this anymore because now i have the knowledge what i am so why is there no material on this the whole program is about this you see the whole path of knowledge program talks about this only there is a whole step in the program which teaches you to re- remain in awareness to abide although you know those who touch the heart pen they don't need any program they don't need any practice so we don't really take it seriously why is there step <laughs> so that i can see who fails in abiding and the one who failed is still ignorant it is a trap so corrections are made look you are not in awareness because you have this kind of doubt you have not realized this your language is impure and so on you see so once that is done the awareness should come automatically you see it should be easier than breathing who am i how much practice it took to recall this thing if, if you have the knowledge you see it should not take more than a second to remember do i need to make uh, 50 videos on this please remember you see when the program started the version 1 it had no practice at all no mention of these things then i started getting all these questions you see how to stay in this kind of samadhi that kind of samadhi and all then i had to research <laughs> what is this why do people want to do, do do this what is wrong with people i said you are brahman you want to practice amazing isn't it it indicates only one thing that no knowledge happened there no knowledge happened let's go back to our uh, uh, male and female metaphor for 5 minutes somehow you got this confusion that i am a female or i am a woman now somebody told you look no no this is wrong you are you are mistaken hallucination illusion maya you are not a woman look you are a man okay okay what practice do i need to remain man <laughs> something is wrong isn't it i always forget that i am a man i always think that i am a woman something is wrong really yeah. there is something some issue here so the solution is not practice not more practice the solution is look you don't know who you, you are not a woman no my mind is like this it can mean many things you say either there is some mental issues there or otherwise a, a mentally healthy person why will he keep thinking i am a woman i am not brahman why will they keep thinking like this so it is a open secret that, that i don't practice anything sometimes i lie to people that i practice a lot <laughs> just to encourage them but really there is no practice on the path of knowledge nothing 
I give practice only to keep these people engaged for a while till you know the sun rises in their heads the darkness goes away sometimes it takes time nobody in in the ancient time gave any practice not adi shankara acharya not avdut not ashtavakra nobody gave us practices why is that and how come there are so many practices nowadays it is very simple nobody has the knowledge actually the actual knowledge is lacking so they try to get it through practice because you see that yogi is doing practice that meditator is doing practice that kundalini fellow is doing practice in some kind of himalayan mountain cave i also need to do something to become what i am and that is simply indication of lack of guru there is no guru you don't have any guru you heard it from somewhere awareness and these words and that words abiding and all and that's all you heard the knowledge never happened and it never happened because you don't have a guru so i am asking pushkar who is your guru who gave you the systematic knowledge and initiation on the path of knowledge gyan yog mr pushkar because there is your solution actually i can give you any practice you see random practice that's not the real solution shijang is saying it's some kind of remembrance that's most accurate as per my limited experience yes yes you are right remembrance is the right word some even you know awareness is not that good but we took it borrowed it but the remembrance is more accurate all you need to do is remember you are a man forget being a woman or if you are a woman originally forget being a man so remember and nothing else needs to happen you see my all addictions are same my <laughs> my uh, financial condition is same my wife is same and my husband is same what is wrong with that isn't it perfection already in brahman no no i thought there will be some good effect of this spiritual thing you see yes the good effect is you lost your ignorance there is no other good effect on the path of knowledge no but my mental disorders same my physical body is same and that means you see and even the what is path of knowledge that is that much is also not understood by that seeker so the proper direction is shown you see okay go and uh, fix all these issues then you can come on path of knowledge this is the prescription here so pushkar is saying no one and yes i am yet to go on a systematic path yes yes that's what i was trying to say that uh, you see i can give you practice assuming totally that you know everything each and every word precisely and it is true according to your own experience and but uh, then you will waste three or four more years before you find out that nothing is working because the root cause is not adopting the path make it your own and then we can talk about all this practice and all say if if it is really needed it will be given your own guru will give it to you vikas is saying can you please talk about ashta siddhis anima lagima is that metaphorical do people really can shrink down to atomic levels yes everything is possible in illusion then what is it that shrinks what is it that grows illusion only <laughs> not people remember there are no people whether you see are these people really small or are they really big can somebody tell me is your size size of the body is it really small or is it really big or is it perfectly okay can somebody tell me people on path of knowledge they have all these answers and the answer is always such that you see <laughs> the question becomes meaningless what is your real size vikas has the answer yes can't be said uh, without comparisons in absolute is meaningless very nice very good see and riddhi is saying everything is relative yes graham has given his size <laughs> very good you see your size and the body etc important for ladies <laughs> not for spiritual seeker if you compare yourself to an atom you are huge trillion times bigger and if you compare yourself to a galaxy less than zero don't even exist so what is the meaning of the siddhis nothing really it is all an illusion so he is asking whether they are true no no are they true no no not true nothing is true here in the illusion and everything is possible here so it is not meaningful to say whether it really happens or not it is more meaningful to say that do you want it to happen or not tell me you want that to happen 
I can. I have already made you biggest and the smallest in one sentence. Already done. As soon as you said this is relative, it is already done. You have the siddhi. Now, <laughs> do you really want to play in the illusion? Tell me. Because yes, everything can be done. Everything is possible, and that is called the path of occult, where these people are playing. You see, when we say on the path of knowledge that there are infinite possibilities. and then we don't even bother to explore those possibilities is completely meaningless we don't get anything by doing that and and any intelligent person will find that yes i am the biggest and i am the smallest i am in between why because every form is taken by the brahman only they are all my form so give up your ignorance you don't need siddhis interesting thing is when we give up our, our ignorance we progress and then the siddhis happen they happen automatically as a result of your progress are they real then no still illusion your progress is also illusion the brahman never progresses it does not need to progress the illusion pro- the illusory figure progresses the illusory creature and whatever it gets as a result of progress as a result of destruction of its own limitations it thinks i am gaining something funny thing is the creature is not really progressing the creature is on the way to dissolution so you see everything is joke here everything is a joke if you understand it completely Th- this fellow is so happy that i am getting all the powers and all you see now the boundaries are breaking what it is happening what is happening is <laughs> it is disappearing the boundaries are broken now the perceived size of the body can become anything and it is a reason to celebrate no the next step is nothing at all that thing is going to become nothing infinite possi- possibility again isn't it <laughs> so things are meaningful only if they are limited and small it is all very amusing you see yes shishang is saying i don't say anything einstein says all right yes whatever einstein said you see we are saying this since thousands of years this the, the relativity is the law of mind actually or you can say law of memory that is found since ancient egypt at least and we are probably older than that so it's all rediscovery rediscovery shishang is saying existence has progressed to become a better existence at least this is what the illusion is you see when the seeker comes here and they say oh i want this siddhi that siddhi then we have no other option to say that yes progress you will get everything this is a big lie just like i said you know the guru lies all the time hardly any sentence is true so why is that said because he understands nothing else except this progress but uh, simply telling this fellow that you look the progress is dissolution into nothingness and these siddhis are totally useless completely garbage and that will stop his seeking actually that will stop his progress also so we we never say like this we encourage the seekers to progress and we let them realize slowly <laughs> what happened and this is also grace this is also compassion of the guru to keep the seeker under delusion is also compassion otherwise we lose that seeker forever or he will go somewhere else you say to fi- to fulfill his desire so you won't get siddhis on the path of knowledge no 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 you will get them you cannot escape this thing as far as i know every creature will get them why because it is simply breaking of barriers like if you run your car without maintenance for a long time <laughs> what happens the parts they start breaking and ultimately if you keep running it obviously it won't run but if you leave it there it will become dirt it will be rusted everything will rot down will be dissolved in the dirt that is progress of the car same way this creature is progressing is there okay okay i want the dissolution then you see but is there a dissolution according to me it's not there it is recycled back if somebody comes and digs the ground and you know extracts the metals and so on makes a new car or makes a you can say jar or toilet out of it anything useful for the existence so <laughs> your dissolution is also illusion the thing dissolves here because nothing appeared these pool of memories they are scattered and then they are, they are they reappear as something else you see so highly disappointing highly you can say discouraging 
the truth is so bitter that it is never given directly so yes sometimes we see the progress and the progress is simply realization after realization that i was wrong here i was wrong there i was wrong now also and whatever i think will be wrong in the future also this is all there is to progress this is the story of your progress so that is why you know the devotee uh, who completely believes his guru progresses very fast because he saved this kind of trouble of you can say face palms falling on <laughs> their face again and again they are saved for by this blind belief in the guru although it is discouraged you know you need to find out yourself how wrong i was you need to find it out yourself what is right now right here is complete perfect excellent beautiful now i call this progress actually the carelessness the meaninglessness the aimlessness complete freedom that you get by saying this is progress there is no other progress and probably that is what is called the isness in buddhism although i don't know the real meaning of it but the word isness is so beautiful this is it do we need to do anything more than that is there any practice beyond this <laughs> do we need to practice being the is which means the being the whole the existence it is simply being that which is right now see how simple it is but no no, no. the mind likes complications actually i was told all these things long ago probably i was told this thing many lifetimes ago but no it was completely rejected this is my own story actually for for the ego or for the creature this kind of statement or this kind of knowledge is completely useless it finds no advantage in this so what it what does it do it slips back in the world world means the illusion and what do we do about it nothing at all if somebody is trying to do something about the creature again you see again there is ignorance even though momentary the, the ego cannot be situated in the truth is completely false so what is the solution that we have found we turn the ego in service of knowledge in that way it gets to remain in the world it gets a meaning also of its life and it does something useful which is marginally useful actually it gets this illusion that i am doing something good in the culmination of this kind of philosophy is the guru field they know it is a big joke but they can keep doing it because there is no other solution as far as i know everything else will fail so the final destination for a seeker is not dissolution not becoming god goddess not becoming uh, the buddha or whatever they call it is final destination for any seeker is to come back in the play back to the marketplace and if you do it uh, through the service then you get some kind of satisfaction otherwise it is completely meaningless so this this happens naturally whether you like it or not you will spend 30000 years in your own world meditating because you are the brahman yes after 30000 years <laughs> you realize uh, i wasted my time so <laughs> i have i have never found anything better than this the bodhisattva tendency is your final destination you get to enjoy the maya also the ego will not complain the devi will be very happy you know oh he is engaging in my play he is playing the game of liberating people from illusion and that is very very fascinating for the ma devi you see the maya otherwise she has no opposition otherwise the maya is is unchallenged so she gets something to keep her happy you know keep her engaged we get something everybody is happy nothing is actually achieved Shishang is saying this is uh, this is perfectly aligned as per experience and intellect, but then also sometimes a thought, fearful thought arises. What if I have become a psychopath of some kind? Whole population is 180 degree from me. He says so. That is not really a bad thing. Remember, from your point of view, the this the whole population is psychopaths. we don't use this kind of word be very strong word we say ignorant <laughs> just like you said relative isn't it it is re- who is sane who is insane is relative nobody is sane and nobody is insane so a seeker is insane from the point of view of ignorant person 
and the ignorant person is hopelessly insane completely insane from the point of view of a seeker so you should enjoy all these fearful thoughts siddhan is saying normally the statistics yes it can drift to anything isn't it <laughs> you can see it everywhere actually i know somebody saw the picture of indian trains in um, before independence something like this and uh, there were less people inside the train and more people on the roof of the train all the time is over but i'll finish this story the train was packed with people on the roof of the train now that is insane from that person's point of view but for the indians poor people at the time colonized country it was perfectly normal that is how they could get from one place to another in those days so who is crazy probably everybody siddhant is saying city people are crazy yes the city people think the village people are crazy so ultimately nothing is established in illusion <laughs> like we said nothing can be established in the illusion now you understand why all the great masters they left the illusion alone why i say that when you know the essential knowledge you should leave the program in first 10 minutes i say this of the program and during the program also i keep saying everything is over now you can leave the program this is the reason so looks like time is over today i thought there won't be any questions but ultimately you know everything turns out to be opposite hopefully everybody enjoyed hopefully everybody got some insight and uh, thank you everyone for attending today's satsang i'll see you next time